What's up everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we are going to be going through something called auto exposure lock or something that I call auto exposure lock. It was called hybrid mode in the past but I always feel like that confuses people because if you look at the top of like the, the OG Air TTL remote it has a mode section that says TTL manual and people are always looking for the word hybrid so I call it auto exposure lock. Uh oh. Sorry, just checking. We have, checking. Just we checking. have side sound. <laughs> so, that was my fault. Um, <laughs> so we're doing auto exposure lock as our first one back for 2021 because one, some people may have gotten some new pro photo stuff over the holidays or towards the end of the year maybe you invested in yourself and you got some pro photo and this is a really really easy way of getting up and running with your pro photo stuff if it's air TTL enabled and I'm going to show you how to do it. So this one is going to be for in studio full control of your lights, we're not going to be do it, and, and I'll talk briefly about how to mix it with ambient light, but we're gonna, we'll are gonna do another auto exposure lock where we actually go outside, and i show you full on how to do that between the ambient light and your flash itself. Uh, but we're gonna do it with one and two flashes, just so you can see what's going on there. And yeah, answer any of your questions that you may have about this. Once again, this is just a really, really fun way that I use all the time to get up and running with my lights. So and also in a twist of this, just to talk about how simple this is to kind of get up and running, Caitlin's going to actually photograph me. So uh, yeah, it's pretty what easy stuff. <laughs> I'm just, well, you do more video it's stuff. so easy. You do more video stuff than it's you so do. It's easy a monkey can do. It. Yeah. You do, well, I'm, I'm the monkey. <laughs> but you do, she does more video stuff than she does still stuff. So she doesn't deal with flash as much as she does with motion. So that's what we're going to be doing. So, um, oh, hey, check the, can, people can hear me just fine, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Ahead. I just saw, I just saw one person who said that they, they are having an audio issue. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so we're going to get started. So it's a pretty simple process when you're doing it. So the nice thing about this, when you're in studio, you have control over everything. So you can pick your ISO, you can pick whatever shutter speed you want to use, you can pick whatever, whatever f-stop you want to use. So you just have to make those decisions yourself. So really the first decision is going to come down to your f-stop. What, how much blur do you want in the image? Do you want it to be, you know, have a lot of bokeh and be more wide open and a little more kind of soft and airy feeling? You're going to pick that. Do you want more detail? You're going to close down your f-stop a little bit more and you're going to do that. So you're going to pick your f-stop first. So for this we're going to pick F8 just because it's easy. We can make sure that everything's in focus and whatnot. So we just choose F8. So the first decision you make using auto exposure lock is your f-stop because that's going to decide how blurry your background's going to be. The second decision we're going to make is our ISO. Once again we're inside with flashes so we really have the pick of the litter with this. So just for the sake of keeping the image relatively clean I'm going to go with my base ISO on my Fuji X-C3 which is 160th of a second. So and once again, because we're in a studio and we have lights and we're in full control of everything, we can pick whatever we want. If you need some more headroom, like maybe your flash is kind of just maxed out doing what you're doing, then you can bump your ISO up a little bit and recover some of that power that you're losing. Or not necessarily the power that you're losing, but you can make up some of that power if you've reached the top end of your flash. Um, so ISO for me, uh, power's not going to be a problem because I have a 1000 watt D2 right here. Uh, so we're going ISO 160. So once again, first decision, how blurry you want your background, picking your f-stop. For me, that's f8. Second decision, ISO. I'm going 160 because I have full control and I have my base. Sorry, I'm, I'm pulling up Capture One as we're talking and making sure that there's no other questions popping up. Uh, and then, shutter speed, we can just pick whatever the heck it is that we want because it doesn't really matter. Uh, I would say stay below your sync speed on your camera. I'm going to go ahead and just top out at 250, that way I don't have any of the video lights kind of infiltrating uh, some of the uh, exposure. You can bring that in if you wanted to. Once again, if you want to bring in, if you have some windows or some other ambient light like a skylight or something and you want to bring that into the shot, you can simply just use your shutter speed and slow it up or speed it down, speed it up or slow it down, <laughs> however much you want it to bring in however much ambient light you want. And that's how you're gonna start mixing in like window light with your auto exposure lock. So, we're gonna do it. But here's where, here's where we are in the steps so far. First, we're picking our f-stop. How blurry we want our background. Two, we're picking our ISO. I'm going to 160. So I'm at f8 160 and 250th of a second on my shutter speed. Why? Because I can make all those decisions because we're in the studio. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on our air remote and make sure that everything that we're using is on the same channel. So I know that I'm on channel one here, I'm on channel one here, I'm on channel one up there. Uh, I'm actually going to disable the overhead light just because I want to take that variable out right now. So I hit test. Nothing happens because for some reason I think I might have unplugged my flash. <laughs> Hold on just one second. This is going swimmingly. Let's see, what did I do wrong? I moved my yeah, I moved my light around a second ago and I actually turned it off. Like a dummy. So cool. So once again, channel one, perfect. So I know that we're synced up and everything. So a lot of the times if you see me mess up, it's probably because I'm a dummy. So once again, I turned my flash off when I was moving it a few minutes ago. So we're all synced up. So now that we have all of our camera settings the way that we want it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a TTL shot of the light side of the person's face. That's because what we're trying to do is we're trying to expose for exactly what we want, which is the person's skin tone. So, or if, if what you wanna expose for is the shirt, expose for the shirt. So what I'm gonna have Caitlin do is she's gonna come in here. You wanna turn the camera around so they can see the what are they? Like, you know, the trigger, so they can uh, see I mean, TTL and all I that. I mean, I can, so the uh, eyes. I'm trying to see if you, how close I can get in here for you guys actually see this. Yeah. It's going to fight a little bit because it's looking for my eyeballs. Yeah, let's, not, let's not do that. That's okay. not going to work. So, but the TTL manual button's right up here at the top corner uh, for anyone who has a TTL manual uh, error mode. If you have a connect, it's actually just spin the wheel from automatic to manual. So here you just go from TTL to manual. It's just top right corner. Easy peasy stuff. So the first shot you're gonna take is in TCL mode. Caitlin, okay. you're up. I am ready. This is my. This is your time to shine. Time to shine. Cut this to there. Yep. This is your time to shine. Let me pull this down. It's all about you. You can see some of my cool facial expressions already on the on Capture One okay. from from doing this earlier. So um, just remember that you're the wide shot and your back is heavily in that thing. So hello. Yeah. Hello. That's your back. So that's my back. So we have the light set where we want it. I'm going to set on this little mark right here. Okay. And so TTL. So the first thing that we, we do is we're going, she's in TTL mode. We're going to zoom in really, really tight on the subject's face. Once again, we're eliminating any variables that could cause the TTL to overexpose. And also we flip the camera vertical because my face is vertical. So uh, it might be easier to come over Go to this side. side. Yeah, because, and once again, we're photographing the light side. If she tries to photograph the shadow side where the light is, this is going to become overexposed because the light is actually trying to expose for this and not this side. So, here we are. TTL shot on my face, up close. Perfect. And so you'll see, popping up in Capture One, that I'm one that, gorgeous know. look at yeah. that face. So, oh, yeah. but we have a proper exposure right here on this, the light side of the face. Cool. So what we did, we set our camera, we set our camera settings the way that we wanted. Then we put the air mode into TTL mode and she zoomed in really tight and took a picture of my face. So that was in TTL mode. The next thing that we're going to do, actually we're on the wide shot. No, I'm... Do you want me to flip? Oh, no, 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 it doesn't matter. I was talking to the camera like my computer screen wasn't up. Yeah. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to flip that air mode into manual mode. And from there, the power settings locked into place. And it's going to be the exact same exposure no matter where she moves. So as long as myself and the camera, or myself and the light, don't move in relationship to each other. You flip in manual. I'm manual. Manual up, and then she can recompose her shot however she'd like to. And you'll see right here. Let's see. Oh, see. You see right here? Perfect exposure, as soon as it pops up. Just like that, based off the camera settings. So if we wanted to shake it up and just show you how fast this is, you, you can, are you gonna? Can I tight shot you? No, no, you don't have to. We're gonna take a photo again. You're gonna come right back out here. Okay. So, if we want to shake this up a little bit, and you'll be able to see this right here on my camera where we're going to change the camera settings. Say we want to move, hey, Caitlin, <laughs> you're up. I know, oh my gosh, I have to shoot the camera now. Yeah, so what we're going to do really fast, just so you can see, we're going to change the S stop to 2.8. You saw that change. We're going to change the shutter speed to, to 125th of a second. And we're gonna to go to ISO 200. So just so you can see how fast you can make these settings. Here, Caitlin, do the thing. Do the thing where you take a picture of my face. I'm doing that. This is me getting him back from doing this. Too. Yeah, so All this is- the time. Yeah, whenever we've done auto exposure lock stuff in the past, I always photograph her face really, really closely. I feel terrible about it because she hates it. So like, you know what, you can photograph me today, so. Here we are. So first shot in TTL. 
Perfect. And so from there, we're going to flip into manual mode. And we should have perfect exposure. Easy peasy? Yeah. Super simple stuff. I mean, I look like an axe murderer. Yeah, you look a little bit Yeah, sad. I look like an axe murderer, but, um, but it's that simple of a process. So We may have lost the link for the B10 competition. Oh, is um, there? So we might, uh, for Facebook. So, so we might have to add that in later. Gotcha. Um, cool. Um, so yeah, so there's a, there's a Facebook competition that we have going on to where you can win a B10. Um, I'll, uh, I'll put that into the comment section before we, uh, end this thing. That way you can see it and I'll pin that comment up to the top. So once again, the process is as follows. And I'm going to come over here and check out your questions as well. So the process is as follows. So we're going to set our camera settings to what we want. F stop first, ISO second, shutter speed third. Cool. Pick those. Then Take a TTL shot of the subject up really close. Does not have to be in focus. Really, really close. What you're doing is eliminating anything that's in the background. Anything that could, so like I have a white shirt on but kind of a darker camo hat. So this could conflict with this and it may piss off the TTL. So what we're doing is we're eliminating as much of that stuff as possible and saying, hey, this is the bulk of what I want you, I say bulk as I put hands around my gigantic melon head. So. But this is the bulk of what I want you to expose for, so expose for this. So, we picked our camera settings, we put it in TTL mode, we took one exposure in TTL mode up tight, and then you lock it into manual mode. And then you're done, you're in the middle of your session. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to change any settings unless you just wanna make a fine tune adjustment. Uh, honestly, we didn't make any fine tune adjustments when we did that just then for you. So you saw me change the camera settings. So it's not like I had it set from earlier when we were taking our, our card shot. So you saw me change those settings on the fly in Capture One, and then Caitlin took that, that TTL shot and then we locked it down in manual mode. It is that fast. It might be one of those things that when you're just starting out doing it, you, you might fumble through it for a second, but honestly, I use that technique for the majority of the stuff that I do now. It just gets me in and out quick. That's not to say that a light meter is not gonna be a lot more accurate, especially once you start bringing in um, you know, a lot, a lot of lights and you're trying to like, you know, get each one of them set individually, 100% use a light meter. Or if you're just way more comfortable in using a light meter, use a light meter. But there's a, a, a huge swath of photographers who don't have one, who don't necessarily desire one. And the cool thing is, is we're really just utilizing the light meter that's inside your camera. So let me see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to move my laptop over here. I'm also going to, while I'm chitty chatting for three seconds, I'm going to put that uh, contest link into the the contest section. So let's pull my restream chat. Let's see. What's up, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. Um, Kate, what's up? Sounds good. Hey. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, other thing. My lavalier mic. Uh, right before it was like the last live of the year. Yeah. Like my lavalier mic just crapped out, and I it's it's off getting repaired. Um, so we're just, it's just shotgun. So there's probably more room noise than you're used to. Usually I have, you know, my mic right here. So I apologize. We're using the shotgun. This is what we, what we're working with right now. So Carl and Flagstaff, what's up, dude? Let's see what's happening over on Facebook really quick. Cause I know that there's just stuff over there. Uh, what's up party people? Um, sweet. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm just trying to get here to these comments. It gets a little, gets a little funky. Um, what's up? Um, okay. Gotcha. So someone said, What's that link for the thing? Cool. Am I missing any comments? Like it's uh, it looks like it's doing stuff in real time. Caitlin will look and, and tell me if anything. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we're good. Okay, right on. So, let's see. Let me get you guys this link really, really fast. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really simple process. Um, that you know I use all the time. And so what we're gonna do here in a second is I'm gonna have Caitlin come in here and we're gonna actually bring in um, one more um, light just so you can see what, it's, what I do with two lights. So let's get right here, let's grab this link. Oh, that's let, that sound Ew. that I don't want to happen. <laughs> so here we go. Um, here's the link for the B10, everybody. Check the comment section. It's still making sound, stop doing that. <laughs> there we go, mute, perfect. Okay, cool, so we're back. We're back from outer space. So let's add in a second light, just so you can see how we do that. 
Uh, it's really, really simple stuff. So what's going to happen is the TTL is going to try to make everything even. So that's fine, it, but it may not be what it is that we're trying to accomplish when we're using multiple lights. So what we can do on the air remote, which I'll explain, is set the ratio between the main light that, or between one light and the other light. So it doesn't necessarily know which one's the main and which one's the fill. It just knows that, hey, the one on this channel, I want you to be more or less than the, or I'm sorry, not channel, the one on this group, I want you to be more or less than the light on another group. So that's how we're gonna operate with that. So what we'll do is we'll turn on an overhead lamp. So my front light is a D2 with a big five foot octobox. Pretty sweet. My overhead is a B10 with a one by three strip box. Pretty awesome. That's just gonna be like a hair light, just something to give a little more separation. It looks really nice. So what we're gonna do is on group B, I'm gonna hit head on the air remote and turn that on. So now I see them both fat flashing. Same thing, so let's just go back to F8, 250th of a second. And once again, you can see all those settings changing in Capture One as we're doing this. So you know for a fact that I am making those adjustments. So they're all locked into place, we're good to go. So with everything flat, you ready to take this photo, Caitlin? Yeah. So with everything flat, it will, um, the main light and the overhead light should be relatively even as far as exposure goes. Um, and then what we'll do is I'll show you that you can ratio one of the lights down from the other one. So again, you remember how everything works? Mm, let's see. First shot in. TTL. Sweet. It's gonna get real close. You should. I feel really comfortable. I'm always comfortable. <laughs> Not always comfortable. So, but perfect exposure on that TTL shot. So then we flip to manual, correct? You got it. And then now you're in your rock. And we try to look less like yeah, an Yeah, did you? Trying to look less oh, yeah. like an axe murderer. Do I still look like an axe murderer? Oh, oh you're good. I'm like a happy. I'm like oh, a. You're kind of happy. I'm like an awkward happy trucker. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that's. Oh, hold on a second. Hang on a second. No, it's firing. I feel like my overhead light's not showing. Stand by. Let's turn off head A. Oh no, hang on a second. Let me double check something, party peeps. I think I made a colossal error on what my lights are set at. Gotcha, I got that set to be. So let's let's flip this. So they're they're competing right now because I have them set to something in particular. The cool thing about the B10 is I can just go right here to my Pro Photo app and fix it. So I'm a dummy. Let's see. Pro Photo app, connect that B10, there we go. No control. Turn it on. Oh, it's not. Yeah, there we go. It's on now. We've got. We set that to group A. That way, I can control that individually. So there we go. We're set up. Cool. Now. Would you like me to do that again? Let's do that one more time. All right. Let's do it. TTL. Things have gone haywire today. Oh my. Yeah. There we go. There it is. So now you can see the light's relatively even as far as overhead goes versus um, my main light. Gr granted, my overhead light is a little bit closer to me in proximity, so it does probably have a touch more overexposure. I mean, it's not overexposed, but a touch more exposure than the main does, but it still looks really nice. But if I wanted to control that, I could simply flip over to group A, which I know is my um, overhead light. And I could just in TTL mode turn that down. Oh, sorry, I'm such a dummy. I could turn that down one stop. So let's go here, down one stop. You wanna do this, Caitlin? Yeah. And we'll see how this changes. So it should bring, you should see the main light come up and the overhead light go down. I'm a hot mess today. Here we go. We all have this. There we go. And it's proper exposure. Perfect. And there you go. So my overhead lights come down. You can still see it right here over my shoulder a little bit. A little, little loveliness. And we're good to go. So cool. 
So let's recap real fast what, let me see if I have any questions. Let's recap real fast how you do this. It's a very, very simple process. So once again, we're gonna pick our camera settings. We are going to choose f-stop. This is the, the, the way that I do it. So, and I think it's probably the smartest way because one, one of the issues that people get into when they're, when they're using flash is that they'll change their f-stop to control their flash power. But the problem is, is if you want to take a photo at f2.8, but you have to close down to f8 to get your light to be the way that you want, that's not the photo that you wanted to take anymore. So that's why I think going this route and hitting these are hitting it in this sequence is the best. So your f-stop you choose first because then you get to decide how blurry, once again, you want that background. So if you want 2.8, you shoot 2.8. If you want f16, you shoot f16. That's, that's your first pick and that's what you lock in. That could change if there's some variables where maybe you're letting in too much light, which once again, you can fix that with high speed sync. Um, so pick your f-stop and, and try to live there. Then you're gonna go pick your ISO. So because we're inside, I can go to my base ISO. I've got plenty of power in my flash. We're rocking and rolling. Shutter speed, once again, we're inside. I don't have to worry about the sun coming in or the sun flooding my scene and causing me trouble. If you're in a place that has much larger windows or you have gigantic skylights, that might be something you have to deal with and you can use your shutter speed to, to bring more of that in or to cancel some of that out. And then when you have high speed sync, which is made to bring ambient light down. So if you needed to flip into high speed sync because of extra light, just go into high speed sync. Um, just note that high speed sync is not a really, really fast recycling mode. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not trying to like pulse heavy flash, like uh, heavy frame rates. So we've got our settings, f-stop, ISO, shutter speed in that order. We're gonna take a skin tone shot in TCL mode, really, really close. Look at my face right here. How excited are you? Got a close short in my face right there. Doesn't have to be in focus, but it's gonna get that exposure right every single time. So, try to get rid of it as much stuff as possible. Take that TTL shot, one photo, and then you flip it into manual mode, and you have a proper exposure. Easy stuff. So, hopefully that was some cool information, especially if you're just getting into the pro photo world, or if you didn't know that the pro photo stuff could do that. It's something that we, um, something that we developed whenever we came out with our TTL system. We wanted you to be able to quickly move between TTL and manual mode in a seamless way. And I think it really, really works. Like I said, I use it all the time uh, to, with, with great success. Let's see if you have any other questions before I sign off for the day. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What's up, everybody? Mexico, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, Pride Peeps? Cool. So, um, let me make sure I don't have anything on Facebook. I'm having to go between the two because for some reason, I, some people saw me start this thing up a couple of times. For some reason, Facebook didn't want to recognize our switching system. So it's just fighting us a little bit. So um, yeah, let's see. What's up everybody? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that method of exposure locking works great when I shoot vehicles. I build my shot around like that. Thank you, explain. Oh, appreciate that, Will. You know I love it. So hopefully this was really, really cool. Some, some awesome information. I know we've talked about this before in the past, but I thought this would be a great way of kicking off the beginning of 2021. So hopefully you guys have an awesome week. Uh, on Tuesday, we will start a new round of uh, our bi-weekly Q&A on Instagram. So if you have any questions that are pro photo specific or you just want to talk about something, hit me up. We'll be there. Um, we have a free academy course in the in the description above or below. I'm not where, sure where it's at anymore with Facebook, but it's in the description. So you can go grab a free Facebook academy course. And we also have a B10 giveaway contest on Pinterest. So go try to sell, win yourself a B10. All you, I think all you're doing is making a mood board and you're tagging it into our, our board or something like that. I'm not sure how it works, but you can make a mood board and win a freaking flash. How awesome is that? So in the meantime, that you oh, make sure, choose your f-stop, so simply take a shot, okay, here we go. Choose your f-stop, so simply take a shot on the face, switch to manual, and boom, set. That's it, that's all you have to do, Stephanie. That's it, or, Stefan? Stefan. I need my glasses. Um, <laughs> when you, hold on a second. Uh, when you zoom in, take TTL, does it have to be in spot metering? I'm pretty sure I have mine in evaluative. 
Let me see. Oh, did I turn, I turned my camera off. Let me see what I have mine in. I'm pretty sure that mine is in like evaluative. I know um, when I was using Nikon, I was always in matrix mode. Let me see what I am in here. Pardon me while I check this. Let's see. Honestly, I never changed this on my camera, so I. I'm really, I'm really. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm in all. I'm in all. So I'm not in spot meter at all. So it, it's this is literally looking at my entire, um, my entire exposure. You, I will say this though. You could put it into spot meter mode, and you probably won't have to zoom in as tight. So if if maybe. One, if you're using a prime lens, which you could just flip it into manual mode and come in really, really close, or you pop into the spot meter, and that way it's really starting to focus on what it is you want, you could do that easily. I just, because I always use the, the zoom in as an icebreaker with my clients, um, I just never change it. So I always tell them, I guess right now it's probably not the best time to be getting uncomfortably close to anybody. But, um... Oh, that's so... <laughs> <laughs> that's why you mask up. Um, so, but I mean, uh, I just always zoomed in really, really tight to everybody's face. So, you could totally use spot metering. Totally. I just never use it. So, let's see. Uh, any tips on how to learn old dogs to sit and use TTL? Um, I just told you. That's, this is my, I was, I'm not an old dog, but I definitely came up in the use your light meter, like, time with digital photography you know TTL was really only reserved for speed lights so I definitely came up metering everything and then the more that I've used this method when Profoto when I was working for Profoto and they showed it to me I was like oh that's kind of cool and the more I played with it I was like oh this speeds up my process a whole lot so that's why I utilize it this is why I think it's a really really effective tool and this is a good thing for people who are who are who've been in the game for a long time and not really using TTL? Maybe you want to try messing around with it. So, this would be the method to try. Let's see. Sweet, I think we're good. Um, yeah. So thanks for that, Will. <laughs> he should learn to think outside of the softbox. I can't think outside of the softbox. <laughs> I use the Magnum reflector all the time, you goons. <laughs> so, but thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, you have an awesome weekend. Check the links in the description for one, the B10, to win yourself a B10 and to get a free Academy course with Dave B Show, which is totally awesome. Or if you just have any questions about any of the products that we use today. So in the meantime, have an awesome weekend. Thank you so much. It's good to be back for 2021. We have some cool stuff planned. And if you want to see anything in particular, let us know. In the meantime, peace.